Hi guys, welcome to Visor Down. Now, my name is Alex and I've got this in front of me. It's the Honda Forza 750. It's the premium maxi scooter from Honda and it's right on the top of their grand touring range as a scooter. I'm sort of stuck between saying it's a scooter and a motorcycle because it really does fit in a weird scooter cycle lane. It's not quite scooter, not quite motorcycle, but it's brilliant to ride and I'm really enjoying it. So let's have a little look through it. Let's have a look at what's good, what could be improved and what makes a Forza 750 the grand tourer that it is. Going straight into this one is the fact that it's a 745cc parallel twin motor. And for a maxi scooter, that is pretty much one of the top level engines or motors that you'll find in a maxi scooter. On the road, it's really good. It, it handles brilliantly. When it comes to the power of this Forza 750, it's a 745cc parallel twin motor, and it puts out 57 brake horsepower and around 70 newton meters of torque or 51 pound foot, depending on which one you prefer using. And when you're on the road on this, it never lacks power, let's put it that way. I mean, you've got it in sport mode or you use a setting that's got the top amount of power that you can with the Honda selectable torque control. And it's, as I say, never lacked power. I mean, if you're sitting in the lane, you need to overtake, twist the throttle, it will drop down a couple of gears with the DCT box and you're away. You've already got the acceleration you needed to make that overtake or take that position on the motorway, whatever you're doing. And as I say, it's absolutely sublime when it comes to putting down the power. I mentioned just there the DCT box, of course, it's a dual clutch transmission. And basically what that means is there's two clutches, clues is in the name, and you're gonna be flicking through the gears automatically and it's so seamless, it's just smooth as anything. And it will click through these gears, one, two, three, four, five, six, in the six speed box. with basically no delay, no you know, waiting around for the gear to change. It basically does it seamlessly and that's really good. It's the first time I've ridden with a DCT box from Honda and I can honestly say that they've smashed it. Quick note as well that this is a Euro 5 bike, of course, and it can be restricted for an A2 rider. So if you're maybe a commuter on an A2 license or you're looking to do a little bit of riding on your A2 license, which is more maxi scooter, then this is gonna be exactly for you. I've done around 600 miles on this one, I think. We'll check in a minute. But I've really been floating around on the back roads as well as motorway riding and really sort of commuting and it's, seeing me a good solid 150 ish miles per tank it will flash on the sort of last bar and that'll mean it's basically got around 50 miles left and then you need to start thinking about filling up so just quickly brushing over the modes here as well you've got four modes three are presets so you've got your standard mode your rain mode and your sports mode i'll be honest i've been riding in sports mode for most of the time and that'll mean that it's got the most power with a little bit of engine braking in there as well. And you're gonna be riding as if it's a motorcycle. Let's be honest, I mean, you're on the back roads and this thing handles supremely well. It's so smooth and it's so good at putting the power down and going around the corners and really throwing it into the corners. Yeah, sports mode's where it's at. You can configure your own user mode. So you can either set it to be like super economical or a little bit more sporty. So you can select your power, the selectable torque control, you can set your traction control, and yeah, you can really set it to be what you want it to be. I set the user mode to be quite sporty, but with a bit more traction control when I was riding in a bit of a damp weather, and that really worked on the back roads, and it was really good. It does weigh 235 kilograms, so if you're going through a lot of stop-start traffic and you're going through you know, low-speed corners in towns and cities, you might feel the weight a little bit, but it's not been a problem for me at all. I mean, I'm six foot four-ish and at weigh around 15 stone and I fit on this thing absolutely fine. I know Toad may say that seats can be pretty hard on the backside, shall we say, but I found this one all right. I mean, it's quite contoured and I fit on it really nicely. You've got this little back bit here that you can sit up against and your legs have sat pretty nicely. I mean, just to show you where my legs are, yeah, I mean, you can of course put your feet into the indents or onto the little raised bit, so if you're cruising away. As you can see my foot here nicely. And when you've got your knees up, you can sort of hug this little bit of, I guess you could call it fairing, and really sort of tuck yourself in. One of the things I did notice is that this screen for me, being quite a tall rider, will deflect the wind right into my helmet. And yeah, you can tuck a little bit and it will go straight over your helmet. But if you're just cruising along in normal posture, it will sort of come to your forehead. So I would want a bit of a taller screen 
it's not an adjustable screen, unfortunately. So I, as I say, would be looking for an adjustable screen or a bit of a taller screen if I was to get one myself. A few other points is there's no heated grips as standard. They are an optional extra. And I did write this down. 300 pounds. So 300 pounds for heated grips. And whilst we're there, I mean, it doesn't have cruise control as standard. And that's something that I would quite have enjoyed on the motorways when you're just sitting at say 70, 75, and you're just wanting to just sit there. You have to hold the throttle other little bits about riding and how I found it on the roads. I mean, let's go to the front. So the disc is 315 mil on the front, so two twin 315 mil. On the rear, it's so a 240 mil. And yeah, I mean, the brakes work really nicely. You know, I've not once tried braking and the ABS has kicked in. It's been really smooth and really can brush off speed just really well. The forks as well, they're firm. They are quite sporty, but they're fair. I mean, if you're going over some really bumpy B roads, there's some around here that I know of in my local area that are exceptionally bad, shall we say. And the forks handle well for the most part, but if you go over a big bump, I've been thrown out of the saddle a couple of times and it's been a bit of a, you know, dodgy experience, shall we say. Obviously it's not throwing your weight around, but you sort of get bounced out of the saddle and it's a bit like, oh, I wasn't expecting that on the scooter. So yeah, I mean, the forks, just be aware of them. The Showa forks, as I say, are not out of place on, say, a Fireblade or something really on the sporty end of Honda. So it's nice to see Honda put in something that sporty on a maxi scooter, especially with the DCT and the way that it handles the power and the sports modes. You know, this starts to add up to be something that maybe someone that isn't always into maxi scooters would consider because of the performance on the road. So we'll have a quick look around the scooter. It's got that motorcycle touch that I wanted to cover. So now let's look at the maxi scooter side of things. So my lovely camera assistant, please come over here. You've got a five inch full color TFT dash and let's have a look at this here. Just a push button start ignition. So full color dash comes on. I mean, as you can see, 250 miles minus in terms of the maintenance and it needs an oil. So thank you very much Honda, please sort that out. But I've also filled up the tank for you. Anyway, you've got standard mode, you've got rain mode, you've got user mode and you've got sports mode. Of course, your gear indicator and you've got all of these little extra bits on the hand toggles, the little bits that you can flick through and use. Yeah, so it pops open. You can easily fit a full face helmet in here. I've checked with my AGV K6, absolutely fine. You can also fit a rucksack in here. Um, it's 22 liters in terms of storage space and yeah, more than adequate. Got your information. Because also you've got a little USB-C charger in this little, little bit here, the little dangly do. Oh, and a light. So you can see in the dark, which is fantastic stuff. But yeah, really good features. I mean, as I say, a maxi scooter, you're gonna expect something in the way of storage space. And this under seat storage is adequate. It's got a pillion seat and the camera person has been the pillion rider with the grab rails. I don't know how they found it. I mean, it was pretty good for me in terms of the weight. Um, going slow, you could really feel the weight in terms of the big old chunk that I am, as well as the 235 kilogram bike, as well as then my really light camera person on the back. I mean, how did you find it camera person? Was it nice? Yeah, it was lovely, a bit scary. Well, okay, take it for, for that then. But <laughs> yeah, you've got grab rails to hang on to. You've got the person to hang on to. And I think it's a lovely place to be because the seat is nice and wide, quite padded. And yeah, it's a good place to be. The mighty Forza 750 is a pretty capable Grand Tourer. I mean, you might want to put a commuter pack on, so you've got panniers, you've got the top box, you've got some smart things that connect to the key, which is of course keyless. You might want to get a new screen, you might want to get heated grips. And you're thinking, hang on a minute, I'm spending 9,999 pounds on this scooter and I'd need to add heated grips, I'd need to get the pannier pack, I'd need to get the top box, the new screen, and you're thinking, hang on, this is adding up and I've already spent 10 grand on this scooter. It's now become 13. Would you be pissed off? Maybe. I mean, you've spent 10 grand on the scooter. There's not really many comparable on the market that can do the same sort of things that this Forza can do in terms of the DCT box, in terms of the suspension and the brakes and the power package with the torque control and the modes. 
I mean, it's a bit of give and take, really. If you're looking for something that's just doing all the maxi scooter things, you maybe don't need to look with one that's got this much power. If you're looking for something that's more of a, I don't know, like a motorcycle, but with a scooter sort of shape and the motorcycle feel, maybe you're like an ex Fireblade rider, you want to come back onto the motorcycle world, but you don't really want to be hunched back over your Fireblade all the time maybe consider this and i genuinely mean that this is something that you can have a lot of fun on of course it's honda so it's going to be reliable and yeah i mean you're going to have to consider this one so thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about the forza 750 it's been a motorcycle scooter scooter cycle that i've really enjoyed riding i mean as i say it's been a delight to ride for almost 700 miles i've enjoyed basically every mile of it you can jump on and just have a great time commuting, B roads, whatever, it's there for you. So leave down in the comments whether you'd consider this, considering it is, you know, right up there in terms of maxi scooters. Is this something you consider as a motorcycle rider? Or is this only reserved for the scooters, scooter crowd among you? Let me know down below in the comments. Whilst you're there, click like, I'd really appreciate it to let me know that you've enjoyed the video. And also subscribe to Visor Down. We've got loads of really good content coming on the way for 2021. Loads of stuff to see, loads of bikes to ride, loads of scooters to ride. But yeah, it's gonna be really good. So please subscribe and join the journey with us. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.